Welcome back everybody, this is Chad with Iraq Veteran 8888 and today we have another gunsmithing specific video for you and uh, we're going to be covering scope mounting. Yes, we already have done a video on scope mounting, however, I got a lot of comments on that video about why didn't you light the rings, why didn't you do this, why didn't you do that? Well, we're going to explain that in this video and uh, if you remember in the previous video we used a precision set of rings on a nice one piece base and everything and really lapping isn't required. Um, along with some of the other steps that I'm going to show you in this video here, but if you have an old nice rifle like this Ruger M77 here of Eric's, which I'm very jealous of, 760 by 39, you've got kind of a two-piece arrangement here and specific rings that are required for this type of setup, and uh, there's some other intricacies to other ring bases and stuff that are out there on the market that we'll kind of talk about throughout the rest of the video, but we're going to show you the proper way that a gunsmith would do a scope mounting job if you took your rifle to a gunsmith and uh, wanted to get a optic properly mounted. So we're going to go over all the steps as we go along. We've got a few uh, specialized tools here that we picked up from Brownells on the tabletop here and uh, we're just going to dive into it and just uh, take you along for the ride. So let's go. So why do you want to lap your rings? Well, the main reason is because no, uh, no ring, base, rifle, you name it, nothing's perfect. So when you're dealing with when you're dealing with um, like especially a two-piece arrangement like this Ruger here and especially like proprietary rings that this requires you get a little bit of movement just because of the tolerances from the factory. I mean this isn't a custom rifle this is a factory rifle so you wind up with tolerances in the mounting surfaces and uh, with a two-piece arrangement make the problems exponentially worse. Um, if you have a single piece base uh, like some of the Leupold type bases um, basically it's a, a single mount that stretches from the rear to the front of the receiver and basically you just have a receiver that has plug holes in it. You pull those screws out, drop the base in place and then you drop proprietary Leupold style rings in and uh, sometimes those are windage adjustable as well and we'll get into another little tool to kind of check for that in a minute but basically with this arrangement here with the Ruger rings you have a key and a key slot and then just kind of like a little wedge style um, rail here and these ring bases will just get pushed forward and snugged up and we're just going to kind of hand tighten them for the moment using our little magnet tip set here from Brownells. Okay, so push that forward and we're just going to snug that up. Before we start the lapping procedure, um, we're going to use our Brownells torque handle here and um, we're using 45 inch pounds, however your ring bases may vary in uh, the specified torque setting, so you just need to consult your instructions for that. We're going to take our lapping rod here. Now this is just a one inch stainless steel lapping rod available from Sinclair and we're going to drop that in and just kind of eyeball it and I can already see that I'm getting contact up front here on this front ring but I'm not getting any contact on the other side here. Same thing on, yep, same thing on the other side. So, I mean, it's quite apparent that these rings definitely could benefit from lapping. We're just going to use a aluminum oxide lapping compound. Now, there are cheaper lapping compounds out there that are uh, not specialized for gunsmithing type work, uh, like this with rings, um, like silicon carbide. You think silicon carbide, that's the same thing that's on sandpaper. And the issue with that is it can actually embed those particles into the ring itself and it can damage the ring and your scope body. So, it's really a simple matter. of just dropping some lapping compound into the rings here. Dropping your bar in place. Just putting a little bit of downward pressure on it and moving back and forth and rotating as you go. And what this is going to do, basically you're just removing a little bit of material from the rings itself and you're just increasing that contact surface between the rings and your scope. And a lot of times you can just pull it off and you can actually look and see the material that's being removed. It really doesn't take a whole lot to do this, but this is kind of a process that 90% of people aren't going to do at home. So this is basically what a gunsmith would do to ensure that you, know, you have a uh, very solidly mounted optic on your rifle of choice. And you can see that material coming off of there. 
But, you know, for guys like, like myself and Eric and whatnot, we have a lot of guns and we're always, you know, mounting optics to new guns and such as that. It it's kind of behooves us to have these tools laying around. And uh, if you're a home hobbyist or whatever and you're just really into guns and you like having specialty tools uh, that can be used for other tasks as well, you know, it's definitely uh, beneficial to have these things laying around. So we removed a good amount of material from the ring here, so we're going to check our uh, lapping and see how it's working along. This is just a set of alignment bars, and basically all this is is a one inch piece of steel that's got a tapered point on each end that come instead of two, okay? And what you use these for is to test the alignment of the rings themselves. Especially, you're just going to install one alignment bar on the rear, and we're just going to snug these screws down just a tiny bit here, just to keep it in place. Take our second bar, put it in place. And then our Ford ring half here. And this is just a preliminary test fit, guys, so bear with me here. All right, so with our alignment bars in place, you can clearly see that the alignment between the rear and front ring is definitely still off a touch. Um, I did test the rings initially on, and they were off a considerable amount more than what you see here. And basically what you're trying to accomplish is getting these two center points here to be very, very close to one another. Um, almost, you know, basically right across from each other. That way you can tell that the front ring and the rear ring are centered and proper. So we're going to remove the rings here and continue lapping on, and we'll come back in a moment when we get everything squared away. All right, so guys, so after about 10 minutes total of lapping, replacing the compound every few minutes on both of the rings here, um, we can see that our alignment bars are pretty much spot on the money. All right, so we've come to the point where we're going to actually mount the optic, and uh, for the optic, Eric has chosen a uh, Leupold VX2 3 to 9 by 40. This is uh, one that's in a silver matte color. This is just a real simple quality optic with a uh, standard duplex style reticle in it. He picked up from Optics Planet. And um, perfect fit for this rifle. Nice color coordination there. But um, basically we've got the rifle just chalked up in a vise and we've got our Wheeler Engineering uh, leveling set on there. This is a really neat set in that it comes with a small magnetic bubble level for your receiver flats or your, uh, your rail there. And then also has a clamp mounted level up front that you can actually fine tune. You basically just line both these up, fine tune the front level, and then you can use this one to actually drop it on your optic and you can level the optic from there to match the uh, level on the rifle itself. Now, typically, what I do is I remove the scope cap on the elevator here. And uh, usually the, um, if the adjustment turret is actually flat, uh, you can drop the level on the adjustment turret and it gives you a little bit more precise measurement there. However, this one is more of a convex shape, so it's kind of curved on top. So that's not gonna work. So what we're gonna do is just snug this scope cap down pretty tight. And we can just drop the level in place there and we can get it lined up here with our level up front. And the beauty of it is, no matter how you rotate the rifle to get the bubble where you want it, so you can see what you're working with, it's going to stay level because it's mounted solidly to the barrel right now. So I'm just going to get that kind of roughed in. And I've set the eye relief on the optic for Eric's specifications here. And really, from this point on, it's pretty self-explanatory. Basically, just drop your uh, ring halves back on the top here and just give your screws just a slight, teeny, teeny, tiny little bit of torque. Okay, just enough to uh, keep it in place so you can actually level the optic out. And what we're gonna do is just get these kind of in place and then I'm gonna um, snug them down a touch and then we're gonna install the other two screws in each ring, lock tight those in place, pull the other two out and then do the same thing there. So, this is kind of the tedious process, guys, just making sure this thing is nice and level. And what I like to do is I don't like to uh, center the uh, bubble level right in the middle between the two lines. What I typically do is actually use the edge of the bubble on one of the black lines. To me, I find it to be a little bit more precise. Yep. And very, very lightly snug down each side. I mean, I'm talking like an eighth of a turn or less each time until you get it squared away. 
because if you tighten one side down too much, what it's going to do is torque the scope over and you're going to lose your level. So we're just going to kind of snug these down just a tiny bit as we go. And then we're going to double check our level and make any sort of adjustments as needed. Pretty spot on to me. All right. So with the rear ring snugged up, we can just go ahead and pull our other screws out of place. And um, basically we're just going to add a touch of Loctite to it. We're going to snug these down, then we're going to torque all these screws to uh, 25 inch pounds. Uh, 25 inch pounds is pretty typical for, uh, for ring screws. Anywhere between 15 and 25 is plenty enough to do the job and keep everything in place. All right, so the scope is in place and it is level. And we are going to torque our ring screws down to 25 inch pounds. And basically, just like anything else, you want to go kind of opposite and across from one another as far as the screws go in a diagonal pattern. You don't want to tighten the front screw here and then the front screw here. You want to go front and then the rear. That way you're providing even pressure on the rings themselves. Okay. Cool. All right, and then we'll just move to the front here, do the same pattern. And then we'll go and do the other two screws on each ring. Very tedious process, guys, to do it right. I mean, like I said, 90% of people are just going to slap the rings on the gun, drop the scope in there, eyeball it, snug it up, monkey tight, and be done with it. But if you want to go through the process and just mount your optic a little bit more um, precise and more like a professional would do, I mean, like I said, if you take this to a gunsmith, most gunsmiths out there, this is exactly what they're going to do basically this exact same process, and they're going to have the tools necessary to accomplish the task. All right, now that we've got the optic mounted up and everything, everything's leveled out, we're ready to go outside and bore sight this puppy. Now, bore sighting is a uh, procedure that confuses a lot of people. Um, you know, sometimes you might mount a scope or whatever, and you go out to the range, and you put a piece of paper up at 100 yards, and you go to shoot, and nothing happens. You're like, wait a minute, where, what's going on? You go through like a box or two of ammo before you realize that you're hitting four or five feet to the right or to the left, or high, or low. You know, you have no idea where those bullets are going. Bore sighting is a very fuel expedient method of getting your shots on paper at about 50 to 100 yards so you can fine tune your zero. And uh, there are, you know, bore sighters that um, are mounted in the muzzle that have a series of O-rings and whatnot for different bore diameters that are laser bore sighters. You've got red, you've got green, uh, all manner of things. Sometimes they can get pretty expensive. We're going to show you a very, very uh, field expedient method of bore sighting your rifle without any special tools or anything. You're literally just looking down the bore. And uh, also, one other thing that I forgot to mention earlier is you want to make sure that on a bolt action that your bolt handle is going to clear the uh, ocular bell of the optic. It's one thing that's quite embarrassing. If you uh, got the wrong height rings or say you uh, have a scope with a very large ocular bell, <laughs> you got to you got to open your action and it's like clunk. Like, uh-oh, you got a problem. So you need a higher set of rings or a smaller optic. Um, but this clears just barely. Just barely clears, but it's not contacting at all. All right, so we stepped outside, and we've got the uh, rifle set up in a uh, hog saddle here. Now, you can use something besides a hog saddle. You can sit down on the bench with a nice uh, front rest and a sandbag or something along those lines. You just need some sort of steady shooting platform and uh, target about 50 yards away. Now, I've gone ahead and taken the liberty to remove the scope caps so we can have free access to the adjustment turrets. We're going to remove the bolt. Now, this method here requires you to look down the barrel from the uh, chamber end out in order to bore sight the gun. Now, obviously, this is going to work with something that you can't see through, okay? But it'll work for bolt actions, ARs, anything like that where you can separate the lower halves and whatnot, and you can see through the barrel. So, what we're going to do is just basically look through the barrel and we're going to get kind of an eyeball on the center of that white shoot steel target down there about 50 yards away and then we're going to look through our optic and i can see that it needs to move to the left just a touch so we're going to move that to the left and this isn't an exact science guys it's just kind of eyeballing it here 
but it's a good way of uh, saving some ammo. Oh yeah, that looks pretty solid right there. So as it sits right here, this is about what a gunsmith would do. If they had a uh, barrel mounted uh, laser bore, bore sider, if they didn't have a place to shoot it, that this would be your rifle. This would be how your rifle would come back to you. So you'd have it basically bore sided. You have to take it to the range and put some rounds down, down range. But what we have here is some ammo in my pocket. So I'm gonna put the bolt back in, don my PPE. And we're gonna take a shot and see how close we are and we'll make some final adjustments. And literally, um, you know, you can zero a rifle, especially something along these lines, with three to five shots if you do your part. So, okay. Single load a couple of rounds in here real quick and just see what we're working with. All right, so I'm taking a shot at 50 yards here and we'll see how close we are with our adjustments. <laughs> I don't think it gets any better than that. Let's take the second shot at that bolt right there. I mean, that round landed right where I was aiming, so. One shot, zero. Let's see what we're working with. Let's see if we can just stack another round right there on top of that other one there. Pretty dang close. Could come down maybe just a, an inch or so. Okay, try one more round. So that's pretty much spot on the money right there, guys. One more shot. Let's go for the head there. Can't ask for any better than that. So that is basically how to mount an optic semi-professionally, if you will. Like I said, this is how a gunsmith would, uh, would mount your optic if you took it to a shop. And uh, the way that we did this here will give Eric a uh, probably a lifetime of service with this particular setup. Once we get this thing fine-tuned as far as the zero goes, take it out to a little bit longer range and see where we can hold on that duplex. Um, for long range shots, that's maybe 150, maybe 200 yards or so. And uh, got a winner here, guys. So. Stay tuned, we've got a ton more content on the way. Hopefully you enjoy this quick look at how to mount an optic 101. Stay tuned guys, a lot more on the way. Take it easy.